Hi, Sister in here with another video. This is going to be slightly shorter and probably a bit more advanced than the axe crafting video. Um, there's a couple of reasons for that. But uh, this video is going to cover rings, amulets, like jewelry basically, belts. Um, and I'm also going to like show some ex advanced examples. Not so much about the crafting, but anyway, we'll get to that later. Um, and part of the reason this is going to be shorter as well is like... Like very low and medium crafting. I don't really do that much of it. And I don't feel like it's particularly needed. Part of that probably a little bit. Because the last leaks we've had. Has had a loot explosion. I'd say Delirium is one example of a leak. Where you barely. I don't think I crafted very many rings at all. Except more advanced ones. Because whenever you get the Delirium thing. That drops rings. There's so many rings that, that drop. So I feel like the chance in at least delirium that you would get like a usable ring so as an example like something like 70 life 40 cold rest and an open suffix to craft more cold rest is huge right um that is that is a very very big chance that you're going to get that when there's so much and that's more than enough than a ring so rings are probably what i craft the least mostly i will just find them um if I do have a big surplus of Alks and Essences, that's also what I will end up using. Uh, using them on. So, like, you know, if you're a melee character and you already have weapons, Contempts are great on Rings and Amulets for early on. Um, but, uh, yeah. I want to talk a little bit about things like what to look for, what you need, um, using the crafting bench. And uh, the main thing I want to show here are some quick tips and tricks. Um... So, obviously, there are a couple of things. Uh, let's see, what are they called? The, I'm going to open them here. That's essential oils. These, catalysts. Now, catalysts are used, uh, they're, they're a bit more of an advanced thing, but these are from Blight. Now, we didn't really have an abundance of them until Delirium, which I am not a massive fan of the fact that other leagues drop other leagues more than the league itself. I think it's just confusing and weird. But um, what catalysts do is the same as like blacksmith whetstones and armor scraps, but for jewelry and amulets. Uh, and for example, a fertile catalyst, um, a fertile catalyst will um, will give you. Let's, let's use it here on the sunset ring. It will give you uh, quality to life and mana modifiers. Now, um, if you look at the catalyst, um, it'll say here. Uh, has greater effect on lower rarity or jewelry, and the maximum quality is 20%, and more importantly, uh, I forgot that that actually says on there. If you search for catalysts, you'll see what removes the catalysts. So if you use an annulment on the sunset ring, that loses the 20% quality. If you use an augment, it uses uh, removes 2%, regal removes 5%, and exalted orb removes 20% as well. Now, to the best of my knowledge, um, the, the, the quality that's on it right now will give it a higher chance to roll, right? Uh, but to the best of my knowledge as well, it only does that. So now when I augment this, it's going to lose some quality, but it will be a higher chance to be life and mana, right? Uh, and that's how it works. And that's why it's supposed to like remove the quality. I don't think this is something that they should keep in the game. I think it's really tedious. It brings me back to back into the day when uh, if you used a fusing on a test before it would uh, remove the quality is really tedious it's nobody likes it it's horrible doesn't really matter that it's um um that it actually increases the chance for the crafting and it only increases it when it's removing it uh which is annoying because what most people end up doing is just try to find ways to avoid um crafting with removing it so i wanted to like talk about that and i know this is more advanced stuff but like i said the majority of like early and mid game rings and amulets, you're probably not going to, well, actually amulets are different. We're talking about that in a sec. The rings, you're most likely just going to find and identify them and throw essences and alks on them. It's not something you're going to like alteration spam like an axe, right? Um, so that's a bit different, but I wanted to bring up catalysts because depending on harvest, this might be something we have enough to use on. And then like four fertile catalysts, for example, before crafting a, a ring or an amulet is great. And then, uh, if you do get that, like this depends a lot on harvest and how much access to delirium we have, um, is very strong because this is just straight up makes an item better. 
Now, how do you craft while retaining this value? Well, first of all, remember that you can't use exaltadors or annulments at all. There are some ways to get around crafting this still. Fossils, completely fine, right? So, for example, say I, um, I, I'm hoping for just, just, I just want a life ring. I have lo loads of resist on my other items. I don't want a bunch. I just want like a really high ring. So then like a Viridian. Is it Viridian? It's not a life ring called again. Vermilion. That's it. I was confused with Viridian. Vermilion ring is a great choice for this. So Scour, completely safe, does not remove the quality. Alchemy, completely safe, does not remove the quality. And this is already, if you were just looking for life, not a terrible one. Obviously this is only 57 and then it's increased by the 20% quality. But you can use fossils. And that will not remove the 20% quality. And then you could end up getting like a really nice vermilion ring, right? Um, so that's some like examples there. Um, there are, and maybe you get a great ring that has like four stats. You really want to exalt it, but you don't want to lose 20 quality worth of, um, of the prismatic. Because 20 of these are pretty expensive of the, sorry, not prismatic, fertile or prismatic. Both of these are the two rarest ones. So how do you exalt an item without losing it? Well, then you need Jun. I have a big video detailing how Jun works. It is a very confusing system and I get that, but I just want to make sure you know that there is an option. If you have Leo on research at level three, it can be anywhere here. It needs to be in research at level three. You can exalt a catalyzed item and it will not lose the quality. But what are the other options you have as well? Well, Einar also has an exalted orb and annulment built in here. He has add a suffix, remove a random prefix, or add a prefix, remove a random suffix. Both of these more advanced crafting methods will also not touch the quality. Um, and harvest, they will have like crafting bench methods and harvest that are like exalted orbs and things like that. They will 99.9% .9 also not remove the quality. So they are like more advanced, but I just wanted to know that if you do find a great item, there are some like more advanced videos there. Um, I think that is important to cover. Especially because like, like I, and I think it's very important to note with rings and amulets that the majority of them, it's not something you craft that hard for. Um, it, it's more about ID. But uh, it's, uh, let's dial it back a little bit and uh, go back in time and talk a little bit about amulets. So, um, a lot of the time you might like, you, you're killing Kitava, you don't have enough resist, and you maybe you have a shit amulet, right? You, you don't have a good amulet and you want to um, get something, but you have very little currency. Especially, maybe you're very low on scours. Uh, so one example of what happens to a lot of people, they might have a lot of essences. They haven't used them while leveling, and you have like a lot of essences around like maybe wailing, right? So you finish Kitava and you're in Oria. This The reason my epilogue looks different is because of Kill the Awakener and this changes. Changes the town you're in. Uh, this is not a hideout. Um, so let's see um, that I'm like, okay, well, I'll, I'll buy a uh, an amber amulet. And then maybe maybe I have a bunch of, um, like, a couple of random essences that I have lying around, right? I have some, some fears, I have some angers, and I have some torments. Doesn't really matter, right? We're just going to be using them as alks. And we have seven alks as well. Now, um... Now, the, the part of here is, like, you might only have three scours, right? You don't want to use them at all. You're saving those three scours. You can use them on other things. Because with amulets, you can get free scours for wisdom orbs. So what you do... I will show you. So, this is the amulet we're going to be crafting on. We'll remove all the other stuff for now. We'll give some other examples of crafting later, too. So you fill out on eight. I usually do it in eight. There. It doesn't matter which gem. It just needs to be red, green, and blue gems. And then I use the essence. Well, this isn't good. I want at least like 50, 60 life. And I want at least a resist and an open suffix. This is not what I want. Red, green, blue gem. Now, this will turn any amulet into an onyx amulet and scours it. So, you'll see a lot of people that are like trying to get geared up pretty early uh, will do this. Uh, to save scours on the amulet. So it'll turn any amulet into a white onyx amulet. So it's a free scour. And this isn't something that's going to get removed from the game. It's been in for a lot of time. Other vendor recipes have been revised or changed a little bit. This is something they're keeping in. Um, 
So same again, it, it didn't like get ending. So all this is doing is it's saving us the scour, right? Uh, and it's uh, a decent chance then to fairly quickly get a very, very usable amulet. So this is a, like a usable uh, ES amulet, but we wanted a life one. So we, we just keep going for that. Now be careful so you don't actually vendor the amulet. It doesn't really matter on the one we're using because it's like a shit face. But if you did this, you don't get anything back. Yeah, this is just free scourings, which can be very good on League Starts, especially on SSF. Um, so we're just throwing essences. Now we haven't hit anything nice here, but obviously uh, uh, this doesn't give us a huge... Like, here's what we wanted, right? 50 life, like I said, one resist and an open suffix. This is a completely fine amulet for starting mapping. This is exactly what you want. If you're a melee character, getting something like more damage on it as well would be great. And then boom, job done. Completely fine amulet. This can like easily take you up to like tier 10, 12 maps, whatever. And you're probably going to find a new upgrade by then. Now, there are more important things about this recipe. There's actually several important things about this recipe. Um, so later, once you progress into maps, um, you're going to encounter different influence types. Now, if you're new to the game and you don't know what influence types are, there are Shaper, Elder, Hunter, Redeemer, Warlord, and Crusader. They're the influence types we have. Uh, and, and what's different about those from, uh, from other items is that... Um, they have different crafting mods on them. So for example, here's an amulet, right? Shaper mods can get these. Elder can get these. Crusader can get these. And I'll, I'll link to the website in the description as well. And there's a lot of um, a lot of different mods, right? And then you have some delve ones, which are kind of different. Now, okay, one thing I want to show real quick is sometimes you might find a power amulet or you might find a coral amulet or a base that you don't really care about. And you're like, damn, I wish this was an Onyx amulet. Well, you can. You can make it an Onyx amulet. Just red, green, blue. It'll wipe it clean into an Onyx amulet. It'll keep the same item level and it'll retain its influence. There are several good things about this. Several good things about this. So maybe you are playing an occultist. Um, and maybe you need, for example, you need, like, let's say that this has 70 life on it, right? No, I meant to scour it. Or did I? Wax on. Whoops. Wax off. So the really, really nice thing is say you're playing an occultist or something and you want to get like an okay plus one curse on with it. And this can be like good for a lot of builds. You can get that a lot easier when you're doing something like this, right? Because then you can craft like... If you've ever played a build that needs, for example, plus one curse or for some reason plus one max resist amulets, it's a massive pain to get that on something that's okay. But if all you have to roll on your own amulet is say you have to roll um say you have to roll 50 life or something, right? Or or like, you know, you don't have to go for something crazy. But let's say say all you want is yeah, say you're yeah, this is perfect, perfect example for an occultist. 43 energy shield, maybe you craft percentage energy shield, maybe you need some extra res, and then you vol it again. You didn't get what you wanted, but you can just keep going, right? And that's that's like a really, really nice use for that. Um, and, and these are like some really, really powerful things because even as a new player fairly early on, does he keep the anoint? Um, no, I don't think so. I don't think you keep anointment. I don't know for 100% sure. Let's go check. Because I honestly can't remember. I honestly can't remember. So let's check. All will be on YouTube. I'm pretty sure it doesn't. Pretty sure I've checked before. I just don't remember. Alacrity. It does not keep it. Anyway, um, so it doesn't work with anointment, so you can't like anoint plus one curse and then keep it forever. But it's it's still incredibly useful, right? It's a very strong recipe. It would probably be a little bit too powerful if I had that. I think it's very balanced and a great recipe now. Now, another thing that is really strong about this is, uh, and, and this isn't, um, this is quite nice in trade leagues for making money. And it is also useful in SSF. Um... So particularly good SSF tip. 
So um, there is some content in the game called the Temple of Atso Odal. And in this temple, there is a corruption chamber. Now, with the new influence types being added to the game, uh, this has also been added to the corruption chamber as one of the bad outcomes. But it is, in some cases, a good outcome. So a lot of pro um, a lot of uh, people can struggle with, well, what do I vol? I don't want to risk, like, voling my chest in this double corruption temple. And I don't want to, like, you know, people are a little bit worried about what they should uh, corrupt. So one good example is... Now, obviously, this part is easier on um, um, trading, but getting an item level 100 or an item level 86 amulet, because that's the highest item level in the game right now. There's nothing, you don't get anything currently for item level 87 and 88. So the highest would be a item level 86 like this. Now, um, when you corrupt in the double corruption temple from Alva, there are four different outcomes. Um, something can get a white socket, which is a uh, nothing happens outcome for amulets, uh, right? Because you don't have, well, actually you do, but most of the time you don't have socketed amulets, right? So that's a nothing outcome. Another one, 25% chance, is that it poofs and just disappears. It's gone, that sucked. Another outcome is that it changes the implicit, so the 16 attributes, into, for example, plus one curse, plus one max stress. Like, it gives you two implicit. Now, the other thing that is a 25% outcome, is that it changes it into an influence type, right? And uh, that can change it into Shaper, Elder, Hunter, all the ones, all the influence types that exist. And for, for chests, gloves, etc., that is it being destroyed. Well, actually not gloves, but it doesn't matter for this video. Uh, like for most items, that is also it being destroyed. So for most things, we consider that it has a 50% chance to be destroyed and 25% chance of nothing for an amulet and 25% chance for a good outcome. However, for amulet, it is actually a 50% chance of a good outcome. So, an example of what I would do, right? Say this was a blank item level 86 amulet. Then what I would do, I would craft, like I said, like an okay amulet, 50 life, one resist, and craft a resist, right? That's completely okay. Then double craft it. Now, there are two good things that can happen here. You can get the plus one max rest and like two good implicits. That's pretty rare, but it can happen. That's why I bother crafting it. Or, and this happens quite a lot, it can break into an influence type. And when it breaks into an influence type, like I just showed, you can clean it even though it's corrupted. So you can get, you can get Hunter, you can get Shaper, Elder, and it's very, very hard to get amulets uh, on SSF. And on trade leagues, these can sell for like uh, between 1 to 3x early on because uh, in the first few days, it's hard to get that. Without anointment, it's still bad. So you're not understanding what we're doing here. We're getting the influence type. You can still anoint it. What if it's already influenced? Um, I think it just changes. You don't get both. 20C at best? Okay, so again, you're not understanding. This is giving you the base type that's craftable. So you would get an item level 86 Hunter Amulet. That's like 2 to 4x early on in the league. And on SSF almost unobtainable i think you're misunderstanding something 20c well two days in an item level 86 hunter amulet is 20c very very few people have an item level 86 if anyone two or three days in because nobody is farming awakener in two days we're not talking about three weeks into the league or two months into the league please go to the back of the class and stand in the corner. Um, so basically, I just spam vowels on it. So using vowels will not change the influence type. This was just a suggestion of something to very early in the league to vowel when you don't have um, when you don't have like six things you want to vowel or you don't have something like big you want to risk or unique items. It's still two x two weeks into the week on softcore. Your chat is just retarded. Yeah. Um, uh, so this is only with the double corruption and now. For like, uh, for like getting like plus one curses and stuff, then yeah, you can just spam Valorb. Um, so, so there's a lot of good, like, good things you can use that for. Right? So I wanted, yeah, to be fair, it was one guy, not the entire chat. Um, and, and that, like, but, uh, there, there are more examples here. Uh, and this one's probably less known about. So sometimes you will, like, just drop an iron ring. With uh, with influence types, and if they if it doesn't identify as something that's good, 
a lot of people can be like, oh my god, it's an iron ring. That's annoying. Well, you can change an iron ring into a ruby, a sapphire, or a topaz ring. This also gives you one chance of corrupting it for a cool implicit as well. So you could craft it as an iron ring and then corrupt it like I have done. This one had a mental weakness on it. So I crafted life. Um, and there are some cool corruptions for rings. I only got rarity. So then I can just like clean it into a topaz ring, right? But I could have had a like cool implicit be corrupted there. Well, like not uh, removing the iron ring. Um, let's see. And there are some like other more advanced recipes as well. That doesn't matter. There, d and I forgot to do that. Is there a vendor craft into dual stone rings? Yes, but I don't remember what it is. I think so. I don't think that's ever worth it. Um, so that is like some uh, some influence space info uh, crafting there. Um, and like the iron ring one as well. It's, it's pretty nice. But it's like a lot of people... Something I see happen quite a lot when I have searches up is that people will sell iron rings really cheap with influences or or power amulets so something you could make money off this or you can just you know like a lot of people will like buy them only two stone to prismatic okay yeah and that's never worth it um does only the color of the gem affect the results well it just affects what it changes into yeah that's it it'll just turn white it'll just turn white um, so that's nice for like crafting. A prismatic base is worth crafting. Um, no, two stone is the best because a two stone is going to be 32 resist and prismatic is 30. You can literally live search stuff like that and flip it on software trade. Yeah, like I said, like a lot of people will sell influence based uh, iron rings for very cheap and influence based um, power and coral rings. So for example, if a if a if a topaz hunter ring a level uh, item level 80. It's like 30 chaos. You can maybe get an iron ring for 6 chaos and then just turn it into a topaz. So obviously a lot of people don't know about this. And that's why I, I want to help like, share this. It's very useful on SSF and Trade League. So hopefully it helps some people out. Um, don't scam yourself. Hmm. Is there any way to increase the item level? There is not. Not a secret anymore. No, I always try to share stuff. Yes, on my YouTube journey. Iron Ring Influence is 3 C tops. It's very, very cheap. Um, now, um, most of the time when I really care about crafting a ring, the number one thing that I want when crafting a ring um, is curses. Uh, and for that, you, uh, you need the influence types. So let's look at the curses here, and they're all suffixes. So for example, uh, and there there are, oh wait, this is amulets. Uh, where's my, uh, maybe I have it in a different tab. Here, sorry. Uh, rings. So Crusader, for example, has cursed enemies with conductivity on hit. Um, Redeemer has cursed with frostbite on hit. And um, here you have elemental weakness. You have a lot of great curses you can do. Flammability and vulnerability. These are not the same role. You don't get both at the same time. They're just off conquest. So they're grouped together. Um, and on Delve, if you ever find... Uh, this isn't crafting, but it's still worth mentioning. But if you ever find like the special Delve areas, I'll show what they look like now. Assuming I can find one. Um... They look like that, but with there's the bestiary one, Harbinger. I've probably been to all of them that I've found. Because they can drop rings and stuff. There's a boss. I don't know if I have any examples. It doesn't show the ones I've been to. Search, but the search doesn't... It just highlights it. It doesn't make it easier to see. Because it's easier to see the actual area itself. Than the highlight. But, uh... Anyway. No, it's not that rare. I mean, I found like eight or so in, the, in this little. But uh, it'll look like... Um... It'll look special. It won't look like any of these. You'll definitely be able to find them. 
Uh, and it'll be like, a, like the fire one is like a fire. There's a search function. Yeah, but it's not really useful. Um, it's useful for some things. But yeah, it'll, it'll look like a flame. Like a little flame. Uh, and for example, the fire area will then be able to drop... Uh, it'll drop essences, fossils, and it will drop... Uh, have a chance to drop flammability on hit rings. So, for example, if you're playing a chaos build, you want to find the chaos one, that can drop... Um, the chaos curse, which... Da, 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 bum, bum, bum. I can't remember the name right now, because my brain is apparently stopped functioning. But that doesn't matter. Um... Despair, thanks. I was like, Delirium isn't it at all? Yeah, Despair. Despair on hit. Um, I don't think there's anything in Delve that can drop other weakness. Maybe they can. Maybe I just don't remember. But uh, a lot of useful stuff from those. Uh, and now when crafting these. Well, they are a bit of a hassle to craft. Um, and people will usually switch between fossil crafting um for like the elemental ones and also alteration crafting so for example something like assassin's mark uh or uh, what else assassin's mark or elemental weakness is something you would probably have to use alterations for chaos crafting is probably an option on software once it starts getting above 100 chaos uh, let's see let me um i'll show again and in this website you can you can click on fossils to see. So for example, if I use a metallic fossil, then it'll show that the conductivity will have um, like a multiplier to how much easier. Like it's a lot easier to um, to hit it then. And same with like lightning resist and all the other like lightning lightning damage. Um, but it's still pretty hard to roll. Uh, and I, for like, Assassin's Mark, it's Elemental Weakness, I would use Alterations. And then you'll, uh, it's very hard to end up with like, an amazing ring. That's why you'll see, um, any like, really good ring, like Life and a Curse, will probably be like, 2 to 5x. Yeah, Craft of Exile is great. So you need to be very lucky. Well, I'd say like, moderately lucky. It's not something that's like, insanely hard. It is just like, it's definitely something that's not common. It's not, I'd say like un, somewhere between uncommon and rare. Um, and um, Stygian vices and, and like belts, I some uh, I have like a bit of the same relationship to as I have with rings, but it's not something I really want to focus hard on crafting early on. I feel like um, both rings and belts is something I'll generally find pretty okay. Uh, items off. I would usually use essences. So especially say I'm a fire damage build, right? I will use anger essences. They're great on both rings and amulets uh, and bells to like have a decent chance. But um, once I once I find a stygian, then I will actually care about it. And yeah, catalyst as well. But that's more of an end game thing. Now I'm trying to like cover a little bit more of the early stuff. Um, so um, once I want to like. I find a stygian, then I actually care a lot about crafting it because stygians with fossils can get so many good things. So let's say I'm playing a fireball character, right? Then I could, I, one one thing that would be quite common that a lot of people would do would be, for example, uh, prismatic, pristine, and we're scorched. I'm blind! There, right? Um, and we can see in, in both Craft of Exile, um, Let's edit this out of the video. I forgot that they're gone. Uh, let's just go back to pristine. I like come out somehow like splurted a little bit and yeah, they're gone. Um, I feel like a dinosaur now. This is what I get for playing Terraria for a week. I found you through Amy Cat. Awesome. <coughs> right. Only matters on influence now. Ancient. Yeah, that, that, I, I just like that just made me so sad. University, by the way. I oh, know I'm a boomer. Right. So, like, a good example for, like, early Stygian Mises. Uh, well, I mean, actually, this one's usable already. Uh, and, yeah, they can be influenced if you're using uh, Conqueror, Hunter, Exalted Orb, stuff like that. What's gone? No, like, the Del mods that I'm used to crafting. Can you explain me how to steal math? Good one. Right. Um... 
So generally, just like pristine crafting is like completely fine. This is an example of an awesome belt to get. If you're a melee character and you're like using some alien and stuff. Yeah, you can't craft 100 alien damage stage and belt. Like this, this would be a, a great belt, right? This would be completely fine. And the reason Stugents are so good, they might seem a little bit unintuitive for a newer player. And if you're on, thank for the two month resub. Thanks so much. Um, because, well, it has an abyssal sockets and, and they have uh, jewels. They might be a little bit underrated by new players where they are by far the strongest thing. So I think they can get up to 35 life or something. Can't remember exactly what, but it's very easy to get like 20 to 30 life on them. And, uh, you get damage on them as well. So other good rules that like you can get blind, you can get onslaught. That's like what most people go for in like nearly every build onslaught on a searching eye. So if you get, for example, a searching or a murderous jewel, uh, with onslaught and life, that's like awesome. Most builds is sorted with that. That's like the number one thing you want. Um, but, uh, for a lot of builds as well, you can get damage. So for example, a minion build, you could get, you know, minion resist, minion damage. Yes, the Delmas changed into Conqueror mods this league. Yeah, hold Alt Mappy. I'll show that again here. User interface and um, advanced mod descriptions. But yeah, th so there's a lot of great mods you can get on jewels. I would recommend to get at least two stats minimum uh, for using a jewel. Well, okay, Onslaught being the exception there, you could use Onslaught on its own. Um, but yeah, two slots minimum generally, and then three slots ideally. So an example of a great jewel for this, uh, let's see. So I'm playing, like, say I was a lightning damage caster and not Archmage. Then I could get, for example, um, lightning damage to spells, lightning damage to spells while holding a shield, and life. Would be awesome. Yeah, incubators is a great way to get, uh, early as well. You didn't tweet stream start. Oh, that's annoying. Um, I'll do that now. Yeah, it's a great belt already. Let's see. Forgot to tweet, but I'm live and we're currently covering jewel crafting. Who said that ban him? What about something like Aspect of the Spider? Sure, that's a that's a great thing that I had not planned covering, but I definitely should. So thank you so much for bringing that up. Um, so uh, a little bit more advanced again, but this is a feature of Bestiary. And um, uh, there are Aspects. Aspects are really, really strong. The most used one is the uh, Spider one. So let's just to, um, go do that real quick because I don't have one to show an example with. Please die, Phenomus. So um, normally this is something you want to like share with friends and stuff so they all get the craft because one spider can get you six crafts. Uh, and it is uh, can be quite expensive. Imagine having mana on an Archmage build. Not really set up for like single target and bosses. What if I don't have friends? Well, you can sell it to other people as well uh, in, in Trade League. And people will buy slots for this. So, uh, now we have the Spidercraft. We got the robe. I think it's the rarest, even if it's not the best. So, now we have that. Um, how do you get the recipe to get a portal? So that is very, very rare. They end up, I think they're like, they're probably quite expensive on softcore. Uh, you need to be in a... Is it... I can't remember if it's 77 or 78 map. Maybe it's 78 map to get Venomous. Maybe it's just... I can't remember the exact tier. Tier 10? 150 kills or so? Yeah, it can be pretty expensive. Um, and how this works is even though it, like, it says craft an aspect skill onto an item, it does not... Um, like This would be completely fine. It does not... You're right! It is tier 13 for... Sp no! No, 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 it's not. It's not. It's must be tier 8. No, 10? 8 or 10. Because uh, the tiger is 13. The tiger is tier 13 plus. So it's either 8 or 10 for the spider. I think it's 8. I 
I think it's tier 8 or tier 10 for the spider. It is fairly rare. Uh, lastly, whatever, uh, metamorph? Whatever was before delirium. Didn't get it at all, the entire league. Uh, and in delirium, I only got one. So it is quite rare. I do a lot. Do a lot of bestiary. It's incredibly powerful. I have a video on, on why it's a good mechanic. A lot of new players ignore it. But if I craft this now, what this would do is nothing because it doesn't work. But if it didn't have the reduced enemy stun threshold here, right? So let's say that this belt had the maximum life, the elemental damage, the lightning and the cold rest, then the last suffix. So now this won't do anything because it's full. But uh, the last suffix would like be the spider aura. Now, this is particularly good to do on rings, amulets, and belts. And the reason for that is if I do this on my boots, then that will get affected by support gems. None of the ones I use here affects it. But for example, in KOE, Conk, those would affect it and make them um, make them more expensive. Yeah, so a lot of people are bringing up annulments. This is definitely something we could do here. So now I would annul it and hope to get reduced enemy threshold off it. I didn't. I got the wed. Thankfully, we we're playing a lightning caster and we don't use our weapon for damage. So we would annul it again. Now we have a pretty bad belt. Well, we have a life belt. Um, it's a good thing it's the end of the league and we don't care about this. Yeah, and blood magic would affect it. So you have to be careful if you're ever going to craft it on a glove or a belt. And this is why... Sorry, glove or a boot. And that's why, you know, ring amulets and, and, and belts are really great for this. So if you have an example of a great one to use it on would be like... You have life, you have um, one resist and one crafted resist. And then you fill up the last spot with, uh, with the aspect. And... Um, I haven't really talked about what the aspect does and like the most used one is spider. The reason for that is it's 15% more damage basically. It's uh, enemies take 5% increased damage and uh, if you don't have any other sources of enemies taking increased damage then it is a more multiplier. Uh, so it also slows the enemies. It's a really really nice uh, aspect and I think it's pretty cheap. Is it 25% reduced? can't remember. I think it's 25% reduced reservation. It's pretty cheap. Uh, yeah. So that's pretty nice. Um, uh, and it's it's great for a lot of things. Obviously, since it gives you both damage and also the uh, the slow. Hmm. Poor belt. Oh, we got a better one. Here would be another good example if it didn't have the stun. Hit everything. Waste of points. Um, but yeah, so that was some like quick examples for best theory there. I'm trying to think of what are some other important things I should cover. Because I feel like with rings and amulets, for most generic stuff, it is mostly about IDing and buying them. Um, yeah, suffix to prefix is very, very useful as well. So that is like we talked about earlier with the catalyst. Uh, it will remove a random prefix. Obviously, it doesn't work if the item is full. It needs to have an open suffix and an open prefix. Sorry, well, like... If it's adding a suffix, it needs to have an open suffix. How to put spider aura on item now? Um, you just have to fight the spider. You would like use it on an item and then fight it. And then it would turn it on like an aura. Ah. So very, very useful. Uh, even though it's rare. Obviously for most people playing SSF, it won't always be an option. But didn't you just fight the spider? So I fought the spider to um, kill it. Get an item off him and also to get the craft. So now I have the craft. Craft and aspect skill onto an item. Yeah, enlighten does not affect it. Because it's uh, built into the item and enlighten sporting is that it's only on gems. Don't really want to cover awaken or orbs in this video because it's like very, very advanced. Um I, I guess I could I could give like a quick TLDR of awaken orbs. Um so here is a hunter amulet. This is like very advanced crafting. Um, let's see. Let's try to get like plus one gem level or something. Then as a quick example, uh, perfect. Uh, and let's get plus one something else here. This is very expensive and advanced crafting. They're prefixes. Um, so now we're just alteration crafting. Now we're not trying to hit anything specifically. We're literally just trying to hit something that gives a good example. What is the plus I can get on Crusader? Because I cannot remember. I 
could use discipline as an example. Is it? It is plus one lightning. Perfect. It would be good if I had one. Just a quick example here, if we can hit it. It is. It is quite rare to roll it. Um. So, um, and and these don't need to be rare or anything. So, uh, here we have item level eighty three, item level eighty six. This is uh lightning. This is like this is perfect. Now I wanna. I, I just wanna like just in case you do get an awakening orb. I'd rather have covered it than not. And this was incredibly lucky too. It doesn't usually get this fast. And uh, also something that can happen is that maybe you have two influence mods uh, on this amulet and that would be bad. So I'll explain why. So what an awakening orb does is it'll combine these two and destroy one of them and put it inside the other. And so you'll have both influence types. Everything else will be rerolled. Now if there is only one influence type on this amulet, it is guaranteed to use that. Um, and this will also destroy annoyance on that one if I keep that one. I think it will keep annoyance on that. Anyway, so an example here. Let's say that this one had lightning, seal gems, and celery. Don't you have to regal one of them first? Not 100% sure. I'm going to try them blue because I, I honestly can't remember. It, like, if you can do them blue, that's better. But I, I think you might be right that one of them has to be rare. But we'll we'll, we'll do that and show that everything. And uh, you can do it. But yeah, I, I wasn't 100% sure. Okay, sweet. Perfect. Yeah, so if they're both blue, this is the best. But let's say that I, I had augmented, right? Say that I have I'd used an orb of augmentation to get this plus one in. And that I had zealotry. Um, uh, I had zealotry and lightning steel gems, right? That's an example of something that uh, could happen. Or like two influence mods. Um, and to, to know what they are, like here they'll be called Crusader. So if it has that, then we need to annul it. Because um, we, we can't have both. And, and even safer than annulling, I could regal it to make it rare. And then seeing as the lightning steel gems is... Um, uh, a prefix and the zealotry would be suffix. I could do like we just showed the um, add a prefix, remove a random suffix, and then the only suffix it could remove would be um, the the zealotry, and then hopefully we would have three random prefixes, only one which would be influence based. So, but let's say that you have it like this, right? Where you have this is the only uh, like it could be five other stats. Like this could still have like life, mana. Uh, fire resist and cold resist, that would be completely fine. It's very, very important that it's the only influence based. Um, uh, and the same with this one. And, and now we're guaranteed that the, the amulet that we are going to forge now, Fertile Catalyst, work before Sam Awakener. Not 100% sure, so let's see, because that would be cheaper. So we can experiment a little bit here, because I haven't actually done this. I usually just do it later. So um, when they're blue, you give 2% quality. When it's rare, it gives 1% quality. And when it's white, it gives 5%. So obviously, like, doing it before crafting at all is the cheapest. But let's say, let's just say that we, we're, we're using these. So this is the higher item level one. It's item level 86. This one is item level 83. So I'm going to click this one first. And then the Onyx Amulet here. Now what this is going to do, it's going to fuse these together. It's going to use this base. So let's say that this was Crusader's Amber Amulet. The base would be an Amber Amulet. So now we have a really, really strong amulet here already. We didn't get particularly unlucky. Sorry, we didn't get particularly lucky. But this is already an amazing amulet just because of the plus two skill gems, right? Like there's no unique that would do anything like this. This is already an insanely strong amulet. Uh, and as you saw, it did actually keep the catalyst quality. That means it would keep annoyance as well. Um, but uh, just having plus two all skill gems is amazing. Now... Now you have the choice that you can risk annulling it. This is obviously like a huge risk. I probably wouldn't, especially on SSF. You wouldn't even consider annulling this. On Trade League, if you're looking for really, really perfect gear, like this is a fairly bad roll. It has some useful things. Um, it has the fire resist and it has the 28 decks. That can be pretty useful. No, you cannot have two anointments. The second, the, the first time that you click gets destroyed completely. Both catalyst quality and anointment. But the, the one you click last will, like, stay. It'll just get reforged. Um, but this is already an amazing amulet. And very easy to justify using. So, um, 
Like, seeing as this is completely full, there's nothing smart with metacrafting we can do here. We can't do, cannot roll suffixes, or sorry, like, cannot, prefixes cannot be changed. There's nothing clever we can do here, sadly. But, um, so let's say that I was willing to, to risk it a little bit here then, and I'm, I'm willing to lose this amulet. Then, well, I can annul it, and the only thing that is bad is the hunter or crusader plus one gems being removed is bad. Right? And yeah, if you're wondering where these are from, they're from the Awakener series. Harvestcraft might be able to make something... Uh, Harvestcraft might be able to target craft this easier. Yes, that's true. But we don't know all of that. But for example, I can't now go... Um, if we had an open prefix or an open suffix, like if, if that didn't have the prefix craft of life, this would already be an amazing amulet because we craft 55 life. Um, but there's obviously nothing we can do here. Um, so we are actually going to null it just for the purpose of like demonstrating. Uh, and that is the worst case scenario that could have happened, right? It removed one of the plus one um, gems and we would be very, very sad, right? That, that is a huge chance for that to happen. It's like um, what, two and six. Two out of six. So that is bad. Now, um, if we had removed... Okay, there we got rid of the prefix, but let's let's get rid of one of the suffixes. So uh, if we had gotten rid of one of the suffixes, to be fair, like, I, I would have 100% kept that if I um, like got it myself, because it doesn't really matter about the suffixes. Why no beast print? You can't imprint rare items. Um, anyway. Um... If I had gotten um, um, that amulet, I would have kept it because there's no suffixes I'm really that keen about. And the chance of annulling the prefix isn't that important. It's just like 55 life that we're looking about, right? So not that important. Uh, like most likely I would have kept it. But if we did annul it and we got rid of uh, a suffix, what we could have done is this suffix. Prefixes cannot be changed. And then we could craft that for two Exalted Orb and use the Scouring. And then when you scour it, it will remove the two other suffixes and keep all the prefixes. So that is, uh, that is some examples there. But uh, yeah, a bit too advanced for what I like. I'd planned. Can you add an other influence prefix on there? Yeah, I mean, you could, you could technically exalt it and you could have hit... Plus one again. And like if I scour it now, now this is both Crusader and Hunter. So if I keep crafting on this, this can hit either. Yeah, the, the catalyst stayed through the awakening room. Um anything else I should really like explain with rings and amulets. Does chaos respect the suffix gonna be changed craft? Chaos does, essences and fossils don't. But, you have a chance that it fills the item, which is bad. What is the name of this mod that shows affixes and suffixes? I'll show it again. Options, user interface, advanced mod descriptions. Um, so I think we're going to end the, the jewelry and amulet one there. I think that's like the main stuff. Like this was more about like tips and tricks and not so much like a baseline for crafting everything because uh, like I said a lot of it is um, um, identifying them especially for early game does awakening always result in six affixes no it does not so and I hope you enjoyed all the examples and stuff of crafting so yeah let me know in the comments down below how you like the video and uh, oh actually I wouldn't mind talking about that Jorgen research actually yeah and I've done that myself too like, before we end the video, let's talk about that too. That's a, that's a good thing to mention. Another advanced crafting method. And I feel, I feel like a lot of the amulet and ring stuff is fairly advanced. Um, so this is Betrayal. Uh, and if you have Jorgen... Where are you? Jorgen. Um, at level 1, 2, or 3 uh, in research, he will turn a normal talisman. So like this won't work if it's Crusader or Hunter or Shaper. But if it's like just normal, like it has no special background... It'll turn it into um, an influence. Uh, sorry, like a talisman. And I've done this here. So this was just a, a random ass um, incursion amulet that I dropped. So this was like a... I don't really know what the initial base type was, right? But like amber amulet or whatever. Uh, and that had the percentage of mana. And it had life. 
and then I crafted uh, all elemental vests and I allocated, I anointed Mind Drinker. And then in research uh, with Jorgen at level one, we, we put the amulet in there and uh, he changed it and I got lucky into a, a Bone Spire amulet. And there are, like, if you look up talismans, and depending on what you want, if you want your level 1, 2, or 3, you'll see that there might be different outcomes that are good for you, right? Like, uh, if you're an energy shield character, there is percentage defense and uh, and stuff like that. So that's, like, it's worth just mentioning that people know it's an, an option. Because talismans, very strong, but it's annoying if you lose the anointment. And this is a way to get the anointment still. So anyway, we're going to end it there for Amethyst. I know that this was a lot more, like, advanced than most of my other crafting uh, tutorials but we'll end it here and then move on to uh, the the next lesson so uh, thanks for watching if you like it subscribe whatever uh, and uh, come say hi on twitch or something and yeah hope you have fun in harvest thanks for watching try to die less than I do